Security is a popular topic when it comes to building GraphQL APIs. Quite often you'll be faced with questions around securing it from an authentication side. But because of the way GraphQL works, there are a bunch of other new issues you've probably not faced before. Today we'll be having a look at GraphQL Armor. It aims to combat some of the lesser known areas of GraphQL security. These include things like disabling field suggestions, query depth limiting, query cost limits, alias limits, character limits, limiting directives, disabling batch queries, and stack traces. GraphQL Armor works with Apollo Server, GraphQL Yoga, Envelope, and as well as a bunch of other GraphQL engines. Here we have a GraphQL server using Yoga. We have some static posts, and in this case, we just have one. Then we have some type definitions to fetch all of our posts and a post by ID. Then we have some resolvers that return all of our posts and the post by ID. And then we have a root resolver for the related posts that simply returns the static array of posts above. Then inside of Yoga, we have an empty array of plugins and we are turning off error masking. Now let's install GraphQL Armor and secure our API from malicious requests. I'm gonna install the GraphQL Armor package from Escape Tech. Now this is installed, let's go ahead and import Envelope Armor. Since Yoga is the best way to use the Envelope plugin system, we can use the Envelope Armor from GraphQL Armor and pass it directly to Yoga. Then let's go ahead and initialize a new Envelope Armor. Here we'll create a variable Armor and we'll call it new envelope armor. Here we can pass some custom configuration and we'll do that in just a second, but we'll leave the defaults for now. Then we'll need to call dot protect on armor and we'll want to destructure from the response plugins. So here we'll call armor dot protect and we'll leave that as is. Then we'll take these plugins and we'll pass them directly to GraphQL yoga in the plugins array. If you have other plugins, this is where you would install them. Let's take a look at block field suggestion. It can seem quite harmless, but if you're like me and disable introspection in production, GraphQL will still look your schema by suggesting the field it thought you meant to fetch. So with this configuration option, we can disable those suggestions. Let's disable it first so we can see what the error looks like in a normal GraphQL server. So if we misspell title and we make a request, we can see here that title has been suggested to us. This is now leaking the schema to the user. If we go back and we enable block field suggestions, now when I make a request, we'll see here that the message has been hidden by GraphQL Armor. The next configuration that we'll look at will be the max depth limiting. We've covered this before in a different video with Express.js, but with GraphQL Armor, this comes baked in. Let's make sure that this is enabled. Then we'll specify the depth limit. And here we'll just say three. If we go back and we make a request, we can see here that we can make a normal request. But if we attempt to fetch the related post and the title of those, you'll see that the request is too deep. Next, let's have a look at the cost limit. GraphQL Armor by default will apply some simple cost analysis to your GraphQL operations. This is to prevent any expensive requests that could overload your server. You can configure everything from the max cost per operation to the individual costs per object or scalar or the cost of the depth for the query. So let's go ahead and enable this. Then we'll enable a max cost. And here we could say 50. Then we could say for an object that these cost two. Then where we fetch a scalar, we can pass a cost here of one. Then we can specify the depth factor. The cost here is 1.5. Then we can also specify that we want to ignore introspection. This is so introspection queries will be executed as normally. Now, before we continue, let's increase the number for the max depth to 10 here. Now, if we go back, we can make a request to fetch our posts and our related posts as well. If we then go ahead to fetch the related post of that and we make a request, you'll see that that works. But as we make this query more complex by fetching more data, we'll get an error from GraphQL Armor that the query is too complex. The next configuration option is max aliases. This is enabled by default like everything else, but we'll explicitly say that we'll want to enable this and we'll specify the number of aliases that are allowed. So here we'll specify that we're only allowed to provide three aliases. Now, if we go back and we update our query to alias some of the responses here, we can see that three aliases work. However, if we add a fourth, we'll see that we get an error from GraphQL Armor that there are too many aliases used. The next configuration option that we'll look at is the character limits. Here we'll specify character limit, we'll explicitly enable this, and we'll provide the configuration max length for our characters. Here we'll specify 100, now, if we go back, we'll remove our fourth alias so the query works. 
and now we see that we get all of our posts and the aliases. Now if we increase the amount of characters that's used here to above 100, we'll see that we get a response from GraphQL Armor that the query is too large. And this is another way to prevent malicious requests by limiting the number of characters that can be sent to your server. File uploads aren't affected here, so you can still continue to use your multi-part data. Those will be untouched. The next thing we'll look at is the max number of directives that can be used. We'll explicitly enable this, and then we'll specify the number of directives that are allowed to be performed within our GraphQL operation. Here we'll specify that only one directive can be used. Directives such as stream, defer, skip, limit, and even directives to make API requests to other servers can cause strain on your server. So it's important that you'll want to limit the number of directives that can be used to prevent any overloading. Now, if we go back and we satisfy the query so we're able to make a request, if we now include this field, if we are truthy, this works, but if we continue to add another directive, and here we can see we've used more than the configured allowed amount of directives within our GraphQL query. If you're using Apollo server and GraphQL armor together, it will disable stack traces and batch queries. If you want to enable them, you'll need to explicitly define that you want debug to be true here. And for batch queries, you'll want to allow HTTP requests to be batched. So there we have it. A first look at protecting our GraphQL APIs with some sensible defaults provided by GraphQL Armor.